Christy. I am a mama of three kiddos, one that is six years old and in first grade, um, and a four and a half year old that is doing pre-K, well, he's doing pre-K four, but he's doing year zero in Ambleside Online. It's very loose, um, but we really do like what we're gonna jump into today, which is all about our morning basket. And let me not forget my number three, which is always running around us or taking a nap when we're doing school because school goes pretty fast right now since we're still in the young ages. Um, and his name is Gabby and he is two in just like a couple of weeks, which is kind of crazy. Um, so today I want to talk about how we do our mornings. Um, we have a morning basket, yes, and we do have a morning menu that we've tailored everything um, to work with Ambleside Online, Modera Mobilis sometimes, depending on the day and what we have scheduled, um, and then all of the enrichment that we want to make sure that we get to. Um, so I hope that this is something that helps you out, and um, I hope you enjoy watching what we do. This is the basket. <laughs> we have tailored, um, I mean, I have gotten so much inspiration from, um, uh, from other moms out there, and I love to see how other moms do their mornings. And then after I saw how our weekly schedule was and what I could kind of pull together to do really fast in the morning, I tailor made it for us. So I hope that this inspires you. Um, the very first thing that I wanna go through is um, our morning menu. So I created this. It's just a little cover. It says our morning. And the very first thing we do are our prayers. So next year she's going to be um, doing her first holy reconciliation. After that, uh, first holy communion. So before that, she has to learn all the different prayers. So we're starting with the basics here. Our Father, Hail Mary, and uh, the Glory Be. And then once um, she has these down, which she pretty much does, and she's ready to go to the next one, um, we're gonna be actually learning the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be in Spanish because we are a bilingual family in Miami, Florida. Um, and then it'll start going into like the Apostles' Creed and other prayers within um, the, the following of the Mass. Um, and then we are still learning different Christian hymns. So this second page, I'm sorry for the glare, um, is from Ambleside Online. We are still learning um, Catholic uh, songs, but we're also taking a moment to learn really beautiful Christian hymns. Um, they're gorgeous, they're so beautiful, and I don't feel the need to separate you know, a hymn from what's played in this church versus the other church. I think they're all beautiful and they're beautiful ways to uh, give glory to God and um, and also just to show beauty to um, my, my children through hymns. So um, we are we are following the Ambleside online schedule for hymns. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and printed out all of the music and I have post like there's little pockets behind here. I have everything there, so every single month that we learn a brand new hymn, um, I go ahead and I change it out. I've also put in a YouTube playlist um, where I've put every single hymn in order and I've kind of like looked through different hymns and I, I think I found some really great versions of the songs. Um, I might have to switch some out, but I do like that I did do them in chronological order of how we're going to be learning them, so it makes it a little bit easier to find them in the morning. Um, and you can always find those under my playlist if um, you'd like to go ahead and use those playlists as well. Um, so the next thing after our hymns um, is our folk song in our morning menu. Now, we don't do the hymn and the folk song on the same day. Um, what I do and here I'll switch real quick. Um, for her schedule, I have here that we do on Mondays, artist and composer. We do um, the folk song on Tuesdays. We do composer study um, on Wednesdays and Thursdays we would do the hymn. Um, that's generally how I've been doing it so far, unless she asks for it. If she or he, if um, Mateo, my little guy, well, my middle little guy um, asks for a particular thing, I go ahead and do it. Um, it doesn't take that long. And especially now that I see that they are getting to know these songs, um, 
they like singing them now. <laughs> so it's really, really nice in the morning to have some songs and um, and to see them uh, kind of like basking and knowing the music, which is really nice. Um, okay, so then the very next thing after folk songs is poetry time. So something that you'll see in a lot of morning menus is that they'll actually put the poem that they're learning here because they're learning to recite them. This is our very first time going into poetry, guys. So I, I'm not making her recite one poem. Um, I'm allowing her to read a poem every single day. So we have um, Robert Louis Stevenson's A Child's Garden of Verses in the morning basket as well. And she gets to choose whichever uh, poem she'd like to read that morning. Um, now, of course, she's, she's in first grade and it's her very first time learning poetry again. So she gravitates towards the shortest ones. The one that she has chosen over and over and over again to read has been Whole Duty of Children, which is just four verses and, well, I'm sorry, four stanzas, I should say, one verse. And um, it's pretty short, but um, I just find that it's funny. She, she likes reading it, Whole Duty of Children. A child should always say what's true and speak when he is spoken to and behave mannerly at table, at least as far as he is able. And she really enjoys learning about manners in this and she is now reciting it and I'm not asking her to. She just has chosen that. She enjoys it. She likes that it's short. It gives her a sense of accomplishment and um, I just love that I'm not requiring her to do it and yet she's doing it, which is nice. Um, okay, so let me put this over here. So this is our, just like our placeholder for her to know that poetry time is now. Right, next page, skip counting. So she is getting um, better and better at skip counting twos. Um, after we start, uh, we I feel that she's really comfortable with it, she can do it kind of fast and on beat, then we're gonna start learning counting by threes. My son, who sits in with us, is still learning how to count um, all the way through to 100 without looking at the chart. Um, so sometimes we'll put it away, sometimes he'll use it, sometimes I'll cover numbers. Um, it's a game and it's something that helps them to uh, feel like really good about themselves, about knowing numbers and getting, you know, the brain juices working in the morning. <laughs> All right, and then this music time. So with music time, um, I've said this in another video, when I was younger, I, um, I played piano and I could not just like, I, I didn't sink in the value of knowing, of knowing notes, of reading notes well on a page. Um, so I'm really driving this home with them now. What I made was, this comes from another mom. I hope I can find her. I found this online in two different places. First, I um, have this little tiny chart, which I made before I made this one. So, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I have two of them, which is fine. They can look, one can look here and the other one can look here if they really want to. Or we actually go to the piano and do this part. Um, but the most important part are the flashcards. I remember um, I decided when I was a little bit older to really hone in on piano but I was older, so it was harder for me to learn the notes. And also, I just, I, I wasn't disciplined enough, and that's what I want to instill in my kids, is having that sense of discipline now. So just every single morning, I like flip through every single one. I'm like, okay, what's this? What's this? What's this one? And I have to be sure to like not do it like this, because I'm not sure if it translates here, but she can always see the note through <laughs> the flashcard. I don't think it translates on video. Uh, no, it doesn't, <laughs> but um, she always sees the notes, so I always make sure to like hide the other ones in front, I mean in back, and then I flip through them, and we're learning the notes little by little. So I have flashcards for the treble clef, and I have the flashcards for the bass clef as well. So after music time comes my favorite. Affirmation, positive affirmations. 
in our family, this is so important. And I'd like to take the time to read it right now just because um, we created this, so it's very special to us. For instance, I am Christina. I am a strong, smart, kind person. I am to be respected because I am important. I take, I take charge of my health and my happiness. I stand up for others and treat everyone with kindness because everyone is a child of God. With a heart full of love, compassion, and generosity, I will work to bring joy to others. I have the power to make the world a better place because I am strong. I am loving. I am Christina. And then whenever we're in the car, like they'll each say their name. And sometimes that's the part that the kids really, really know. They're like, Mateo, Kiara. And then they'll say it for Gabby. Gabby, Gabby. No, you said Gabby first. I wanted to say Gabby. It becomes a fight at the end, but <laughs> it's usually a joyful fight. Um, so that is our family affirmation. Um, sometimes we say it together. Sometimes we say it one by one. Um, and the kids, I think Mateo pretty much has this down, but I have it written down here in case of anything. So he can refer to it. So the next thing that we do is the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't have a flag in my homeschool room yet, um, so this is it. <laughs> and so what we do is we just, we stand up, um, we put our hands over our hearts, we do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we sing a little song um, right afterward. And then that's taken care of and we go on to the um, next thing. this is our bible scripture box a la simply charlotte mason technique um so i hand wrote all of the tabs and um i'm sure i'll link down below the the method that they have they have a really good youtube video about how to do this we just started this so we only have like four verses in here that we're working with but um, every week we add more. And as we learn, we add more verses. Then this is the part that my four and a half year old really, really loves. And Kiara really loves it. I do require that she memorize nursery rhymes. So I guess this is kind of like the transition between um, reciting nursery rhymes, which is poetry, to longer um, poems, which she's naturally doing, which is great. So we use this. Mother Goose, favorite nursery rhymes from Mother Goose. It is such a beautiful book. Let me show you. Gosh, look at this. Look at little Bo Peep. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> and so they're really short. They're really beautiful, beautifully illustrated versions of the nursery rhymes. And so we go through each of them and we learn them as we go. And there's Mateo <laughs> in the background. So for those of you that um, follow Erin in Life Abundantly blog um, and know about her gentle classical curriculum, I was doing that last year with my little guy and it's so beautiful. I am planning on doing it um, again with my smaller child when he's just a little bit older right now. He's he, it wouldn't be right for him right now. Um, but I do have the preschool curriculum and it is gorgeous. So we do cycle through Aaron's um, nursery rhymes that are already here. And sometimes it's just easier since I already have them laminated than taking out the book. I'm like, okay, recite The Crooked Men. And then they just, they, we all recite it together. Or Humpty Dumpty or Little Tommy Tittle, Tittle Mouse. And so we go through all of them like bam, 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 bam. And sometimes we'll do like eight nursery rhymes one after another and um, we just cycle through them they love to do them like i got it i want to do it first <laughs> jack spratt i have never heard this nursery rhyme before um but after it, it's well jack spratt could eat no fat his wife could eat no lean and so between them both you see they lick the platter clean and we always do the together <laughs> together at the end um and i think that's their favorite part so we always try to find something in the nursery rhyme that is super silly and that we do it all together and then they're just like rolling around laughing. Um, and then another thing I try to do every single morning is Spanish. Um, I have two things that I do for Spanish. One is just really simple flashcards um, just to like cycle through vocabulary words, make sure that they know them. 
Um, my older daughter knows more words than my son. Um, so like, I'll say jacket, jaqueta, bird, ave. So we just cycle through them and every single day we add more. So we started with five flashcards um, and now, I'm not sure how many she's up to now, um, but it also depends because we'll either add a new flashcard or we'll do a new page from the Speaking Spanish with Miss Mason and Francois, um, volume one book. Um, I really enjoy this book. It brings together doing things physically along with the with with the sentences the whole sentences and they're not just vocabulary words so for instance um i sharpen my pencil so this is the english page and then on this side it has the spanish page le saco punta al lapis so then it has them go through um like a natural sequence of events for um, sharpening their pencil so sometimes i'll have her go and get a backpack because i'll know she's gonna have to have a backpack a pencil and a sharpener and then she'll get that thing and then I'll say okay let's practice saying I open my backpack abro mi mochila it says it here tomo mi saca puntas tomo mi lapis le saco punta al lapis and she'll do every single thing with the mannerism with the physicality of what she's saying here and it's really driving home like now on the very first page it was I open the book so I'll give her the book I'm like how do you say I open the book she'll actually uh, open the book and say, abro el libro, close the book, cierro el libro. So um, right now it's it's very basic, um, but it's a really good starting point. So I'll have to let you know how it goes if I um, decide to add to our Spanish curriculum. Um, we speak Spanish, I mean, it is my second language, but it is my parents' native language. So. I should try and speak more Spanish to my children than I do. It would probably be beneficial for me as well. Um, so we're, we're learning to do more Spanish at home um, as a consequence of this. So it's really great. Um, the next thing that we do is, well, it depends on the day. So remember in our um, chart, it will dictate Monday is um, artist study. So let's say today is Monday. I'll take out my um, artist study uh, prints. So I created this at Staples, and um, if you're in the Ambleside online um, Facebook group, you'll see the cover that I created. Um, I posted it there for free, and then I'll go ahead and I'll post it in the blog as well um, so that you can print this out. This rotation, this 2020 rotation of artists is um, Titian, Da Vinci, and Rembrandt. Um, so every Monday we will study um, a painting and we cycle through each painting two times. So we do the same painting in, um, for two weeks. Different things that we'll do is, um, I'll tell her, okay, take a look. Um, what are the first colors you see? Um, what do you see on this side of the painting? What do you see on that side of the painting? Um, what is a color that stands out? What is a figure that stands out? Now look at it really closely. Um, if you could close your eyes, can you paint the picture in your mind? Can you tell me what's happening? And then I'll, I'll close it. And then um, she'll tell me what she remembers. Um, and then we just have a conversation about it. Okay, so just how we have artist study, we also have music study. Um, they're not done on the same days. Music study is on Wednesdays. So we are now cycling through Richard Wagner, which same thing, I have Richard Wagner and um, all of the other composers that we're studying in a playlist and I'll go ahead and I'll share the playlist with you um, below as well. What I found were these uh, books on um, the adventures of different composers. Um, there's one on Richard Wagner uh, by Opal Wheeler. Um, and they're really fun so far. We haven't read very much of this. We've read, I think, the very first um, chapter, but I'm gonna put this by my bedside because it is a little too much to do in the morning. I'll read like a couple of pages, but um, at this point, they're like kind of done with morning basket time and um, it's time to take a break and before we start our school day with the core curriculum. 
Another thing that we'll do though, if I see that they um, have a little bit more kind of wiggle room and want to know some more is I'll, I have the painters and I forgot to bring it up, but I also have the composers in a fan desk. And I, I like to show them like what the composer or what the painter looks like. Um, and just some like quick factoids because, you know, who doesn't love a really good factoid? <laughs> um, so we are going to be learning Leonardo da Vinci, so I'll let them see it here even though it happens to be the same one that I have over here. Um, but Titian, um, I had a different one. So then I'll, I'll read a little bit about Titian. I'll let her see if she wants to read it. But generally, this is like a lot of information for a six year, a six year old. So um, I'll only kind of like briefly go over it. And then um, I'll read something new, a new little factoid um, the next time that it comes around. Um, and what she likes doing is looking for it. And I really enjoy her fishing for it. And now she's already recognizing which one um, we're doing first. So that's great. So that's it. That's our morning time. I really love it. Like when I tell kids, hey guys, let's gather around. Let's get on the carpet. Let's go underneath the table. Let's let's get on the bed. Like any, This can be done anywhere, which is the beauty of it. And they really enjoy just kind of coming together in a circle and doing our morning time. Sometimes I lose my four and a half year old. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have um, my almost two year old climbing on top of me like I'm a jungle gym. Um, and that's okay. Generally, it doesn't take very long. They're learning so much in this short amount of time. Um, and they're all things that might slip through the cracks otherwise. If I were to do the core curriculum and they're like really tired and they don't want to do any more, and these like enriching things, um, we might not get to them. I'll slide to another day and forget about them, something like that. And just doing them real quickly, right off the bat, at the beginning of the day, they're fun, they're short, and it gives us like that feeling of like, yes, we, we did the first thing, we knocked out the first thing, let's go. <laughs> um, so I find that it's really worthwhile to do. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you. I hope that it, in, it gives you a little enthusiasm to put together your own morning time with your kiddos. Um, and I hope to see you around soon. I hope that you also subscri subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Um, I'm gonna be posting really soon about a lot more little uh, things that we're doing in our homeschool room that um, I find very exciting and um, that the kids are looking forward to doing every single day. Um, so stick around and I hope to see you soon. So cute! So cute! <laughs> you got scared when I said it. So cute! Apple juice all over me. <laughs>